All right, guys, so I had to, I am recording this again because I was clearing out my phone and I deleted my final remarks for this video. I can't believe I did that. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just trying to clear it out to make room. Anyway, so this tumbler, this wine bottle tumbler, I, I don't even, I can't call it a tumbler. Just this wine, this stainless steel wine bottle is done. And it is in the hands of its new owner, so I don't have it here with me. But after this, I will definitely uh, post the video of what it looks, you know, uh, as I always do. So this wine bottle tumbler is definitely, it was not my favorite to work on. I struggled with this mainly because of mounting problems. I you know, thought that I had it tight and it just wasn't tight enough. So you really, it's really gotta be snug on that turner because it is so long and just awkward when you put it on your turner. So you have to be careful because I did have some leaning at one point and the epoxy did pull up a little bit down the bottom and then I had to shave that down. And then I had the bug, <laughs> the bug in there, which wasn't my fault. Well, sort of my fault, but so, uh, overall, I love the way it came out, but definitely not my favorite to work on. Not something that I would be outwardly marketing to sell a lot of. There was, you know, quite a bit of work that went into keeping this thing from just being a hot mess. So, but, you know, it, 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 was it worth it in the end? Uh, I don't know. Mm, you know, sometimes they're just not worth it in the end, but it was fun-ish to do. I do like doing new projects and I do like challenging myself. So that is it for this tutorial, guys. Sorry that I don't have it here to show you, but you'll see again the pictures. This is kind of redundant. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up subscribe, share, comment. I love to hear your feedback. And um, also check out my Facebook group. It's a craft thing for things that I do that I don't do tutorials on as well as my Instagram. And don't forget to check out or join GMI's uh, Superstars group. Glitter makes it Superstars group to see all of the other creations that people are coming up with as well as their fun giveaways on Sunday. So that is it. I will see you all next time. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia. I post new tutorials every Thursday, primarily on tumblers. Sometimes I do pens or mason jars. I've done badge reels, a clipboard, some other things. So when you're done watching this video, go ahead and jump back on my channel and check out those other fun videos I've done. So in this week's tutorial, I am working on a big boy. This is a 25 ounce wine bottle tumbler. So this is from Stainless Steel Be Depot. Look at this thing, it comes in this box, right? It's gigantic and it's packaged up really nice too. And so this is this big boy and it comes with a stainless steel straw and a two piece cap. So here's the cap and it comes apart, whoops. And this is another piece that comes and it puts in here. And I think this is, I think this is a pour spout. So you have this. So there's, you know, a lot of little moving parts in this tumbler, if you will. It's not really a tumbler to me. It's this one, it's a stainless steel wine bottle. And yeah, now I'm like, can't even get the cap on. Anyway, so this video is going to be a little bit longer than my other videos because of the moving parts and figuring out how to mount this onto my turner. So if you're interested to see what I came up with, stick around and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do with this is figure out how to mount it. So the bottle, the opening of the tumbler is one inch and my turner arm is three quarters of an inch and I don't have a foam piece that's the right size. I don't have a one inch foam piece. So now I've got to figure out how I'm going to get this in there 
And, you know, I want it to fit snug because I don't want the tumbler to be wobbly when I'm turning so that my epoxy doesn't cure nicely. So I have this foam, it's like a, um, I don't know, drain mat, sh liner, like breathable, um, like a uh, drawer liner. <laughs> I think that's the word. So then I'm messing around with this and I wanted, I want, I decided to use this because it's kind of foamy and you can wrap it around tight and it sort of springs back like open a little bit so that it would like expand if it, if you will expand inside that one inch opening. It's kind of hard to explain. I'm sorry. So I do fiddle with this for a while and I got it in there where I thought it was snug and I later decided it wasn't snug enough and then I put a foam piece, a gray foam piece, and I'm going to show you that. It's a gray, it's actually camper weather stripping that I purchased from Lowe's and I've used that on several occasions. So here it is, that's the foam. And so now I've got it nice and snug and I'm going to go ahead and tape off the top of the bottle because that's where the cap screws on. So I don't want any spray paint or debris or anything to get on there because that's where your cap is screws on. And I just said that. So sorry, that was repetitive. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that off with masking tape. You can use electrical tape or painter's tape, whatever you want. I picked this masking tape up at the Dollar Tree, so I'm using that right now. So I'm going to, I get it all taped off and now I am going to now I'm ready to prep this tumbler as I always do by sanding it uh, and wiping it down so here I am with my sanding block the grit I don't know probably a 180 to 220 grit I use a fine uh, a fine sand uh, fine grit sandpaper my goodness I can't even get that out a fine grit sandpaper to take that sheen off and this tumbler is from Stainless Steel Depot and they put these little plastic like coverings over this bottom piece. I'm not really sure what that's all about. But uh, so I struggled a little to pull this off. So I took my craft knife and got up underneath there and just kind of peeled it away and then finally got it off. So I go ahead and sand it. And so after you get done sanding your uh, tumbler, which make sure you get that top you know, really well, the hand, you know, uh, up all the way up, spray it with 91% alcohol to get all of that stainless steel residue off. And you'll see it will be like a dark gray or a black color. That's fine. That's coming off. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this outside and I'm going to spray it matte white. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it one, uh, two coats. I usually do two coats of the matte white to make sure I've got nice good fall coverage because the glitter we use is kind of a translucent. So if you see any stainless steel coming through, it's going to kind of, it's going to make it look shaded. So you don't, so you want to make sure you've got a good covering. You could also uh, cover this with acrylic paint if you want, white acrylic paint or white chalk paint. If you're out of spray paint, because I know um, there's still some spray paint shortages going on, and um, chalk paint's kind of popular too. It gives you a nice matte finish. So I'm gonna apply my glitter using the epoxy method. I've mixed up uh, five mLs of epoxy, and I'm gonna use just about all five mLs because this is a big boy tumbler. This thing's almost as big as me. And uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make sure my bottle is warm and I'm gonna spread it on nicely, making sure I get up that neck, but not too high because I don't want to, they don't wanna get, I don't want it on the rim where the bottle cap is gonna screw down. So now I am taking my glitter. This is a semi chunky glitter. It is called Diamond Dust. No, this one isn't Diamond Dust. This one is Girl's Best Friend. Diamond Dust is the fine version of this, which I will be using later on. But right now, I'm just going to go ahead and just coat this cup, get it all nice and covered. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my parchment paper and I'm going to wrap it around. No, I'm not doing that yet. Sorry, I'm coming in with my gold now, my gold rush. So I decided I wanted to do the bottom gold and I'm gonna ombre that up the bottle. So it's kind of like the wine or the champagne, um, white wine or white champagne that's coming up. I, I just thought that the gold was gonna look really nice and the person who ordered this bottle really loved it and the other three bottles that I'm gonna be doing uh, in this order are gonna have the gold at the bottom too. So after I get that gold on, then I'm going to come in with my diamond dust, which is the very fine version of this 
uh, girl's best friend. Yes, that's it. Girl's best friend. And I'm going to go back and forth a few times between the white and the gold to just fade them in and get an ombre look. So I'm just going to play a little music real quick while I do that. And you can just watch the process and then we'll move on. Alright, so now that I've got this to where I wanted it, I went and I sealed it with Krylon's Triple Thick. And so, I'm sorry, I didn't show you this. Uh, if you're not familiar or you're, you're unsure why we would seal the glitter, I'm going to post a link above about sealing glitter and the different things to seal it with. But I did two coats of Krylon Triple Thick. Let it dry 10 minutes in between each coat and then I let the two final coats dry for about an hour before I went in for my epoxy. So I mixed up 40 mLs of epoxy. And yeah, that's a lot of epoxy, but this is a big bottle and I wanna get a good coat over this. So I wound up doing two coats. So the first coat was 40 mLs and then the second coat was 25. And then uh, I let, I used a uh, regular set epoxy. I did not want to use a fast set epoxy because this is a white bottle and I am terrified that the, that the fast set that I'm using isn't UV protectant enough. So I, this bottle took a little bit longer because I went in with my regular set epoxy that has UV protectant. So I let it dry for six hours after I did the first coat and uh, then I went and I put my second coat and let it dry for 12 hours before I went in to start working on my label. And so uh, just get your epoxy on evenly, be careful about the, or be careful with the neck because you don't want it to uh, pull up there, do your torch and that's it. So here is my label. I created this label using a design from Creative Fabrica and I will show you how to do that. And I cut it out because my Cricut does not do a print and cut evenly. So I hand cut out the portion that was white, that it didn't, it didn't cut perfectly. And I've, hear, I've heard a lot of this, these complaints. So that's where I put my label on over top of where I put, I had some gold. You could see earlier on, I had some gold up at the top or uh, in the middle of the bottle, so I covered it with this. And then there was still a little bit of white, so I'm just trimming it with my craft knife. And once I've got this label how I want it, I'm gonna put it back on the turner for another coat of epoxy. So I mixed 25 mLs of my regular set epoxy and I am just going to coat this as I always do. Again, I just wanna point out, be careful around the neck make sure that where it starts to taper it doesn't pull and make sure you get your bottom spread your epoxy evenly and that is it guys like there's nothing more so 
I am going to put this epoxy on. I am going to torch for bubbles. Five minutes later, I'm going to come back and torch again. And then uh, this bottle is not done because I still need to talk to you about doing the cap. So while this is curing, I am going to move on to the cap. All right. So I will see you in a minute. So before I move on to the cap portion, this is where I am going to show you that a bug got cured into my bottle overnight. So uh, I have a separate tutorial that I did on this and uh, I will link it above on removing the bug from your cured epoxy. So I, you know, I, I let my uh, bottle cure. So this is right before I put it back on the turner. This is after the bug repair and I'm cleaning up that rim, the bottle rim where the cap is going to meet. So I'm just showing you that be careful that you're, I'm using a tool because that, that tool can get in there easier. Just be careful. You don't grind too much of that, um, rim down to make it too rough just you know clean it up you know as you would clean up a cup pretty much use your craft knife use some alcohol and use the little rotary tool to get it nice and smooth and then i had to put it back on the turner for another 25 ml of epoxy then the bottle portion of this was done so after this i'm going to jump into the label design and then i'm going to jump into doing the cap Oh, and just to show you a little hack, I removed a little bit of the white paint up there, so I'm just touching it up with a white paint pen. So you can do that with pretty much most of your glitters, and it'll fix that problem. And if you want to dab a little of, uh, like, tack it on there and dab a little bit of glitter up there to replace it, that's something that can easily be done as a repair. All right, guys, last coat of epoxy. I am not even going to show you all of this because you've seen me epoxy this bottle already. Again, 25 mLs. Make sure you torch for bubbles. And that is it for this bottle. So now I'm going to move on to the design and then the cap. So time to move on to the cap. So this cap is a two-piece cap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave that piece together and then i'm going to tape the bottom off and spray paint it just like that i'm going to prep this like i would prep anything else that's stainless steel by giving it a quick sand with a fine grit sandpaper and then i'm going to wipe it off with 91 percent alcohol take it outside and spray paint it white to match the cup I let my spray paint dry for about an hour. Now it is time to mount this and I'm using the insert on this Turner foam to, and it, for, it fits, you gotta kinda squeeze it in there but that's perfect so it gives it a nice, it's nice and snug and that's what you want. I am going to apply my glitter using the epoxy method on this cap and so just, I, I'm sure you figured this out by now, I'm doing these caps separately instead of together because I want to make sure that I don't epoxy them together. So I just grab a teeny tiny little bit, just enough to wet it and make it sticky. And, you know, of course I mixed up way too much epoxy, so I used the extra on another project. But uh, so once I get that on there, and yeah, I am going to glitter it. So here we go. I've got the same glitter. I'm using the girl's best friend and I don't remember if I went over top of it with diamond dust because I got pretty good coverage with this. So I'm just pressing it down, just making sure that glitter is like nice and flat for when we put it on our turner because you know, we don't want any pokies and I just go around the edge right there with a, the end of the paintbrush to make sure that there's nothing sticking down. All right, so now I'm gonna glitter the bottom part of that cap and I'm gonna get good coverage on that. And I'm also gonna flatten that down with a piece of parchment paper to make sure that it's nice and flat. It's really important that you make sure the glitter is nice and flat on both of these pieces because 
you you don't want to have to do a lot of sanding because they're small pieces and they're hard to handle so all right here i do i do come in with the diamond dust to uh, give it a good coating make sure that it is completely covered so i do both the top cap piece and then this bottom cap piece and i'm going to roll them out once again on the parchment paper just making sure everything is nice and flat I did use a quick set epoxy on this so I let it dry for two hours and now that it is dry I am just brushing off the excess glitter with a fine bristle brush and I'm going to come in with my tape and tape up these ends because I want to make sure that if I get sloppy with my epoxy that it doesn't get on these plastic pieces because I imagine that it would probably be hard to get off. And I know that this video is a little bit longer than some of my other videos and I want to apologize but I don't want to I don't want to speed through and cut too much out. I want you to see every part of what you may be dealing with when you're dealing with these caps like you know this down at the bottom here the where it's going to meet the other cap. You want to make sure that that's nice and flat and flush and that there's no pokies hanging down. So once I got done cleaning that up, I gave it two coats of Krylon Triple Thick to seal the glitter. Now it is time for my epoxy and I'm using my regular set epoxy and I'm going to say you don't even need like, it's probably like one ml on this cap on uh, maybe two mls total for the top uh, cap and the bottom cap. It's like two, I don't know, it's two caps. So it's a top cap cap and then like a connector cap i don't know yeah maybe that's what i'll call it connector so torch for bubbles turn and then it will require a second coat uh but make sure as soon as you're done applying your epoxy you take that tape off because you do not want your epoxy to be sealed to the tape and that was the bottom cap so this is the top cap part and it just slid on my turner arm and then I'm just gonna put this epoxy on very, very carefully. Again, I don't wanna get I don't wanna get too sloppy, but I will be pulling that tape right off as soon as I am done applying this epoxy and give this a quick torch. And then that painter's tape will come off. After about six to eight hours, I'm gonna give this a second coat of epoxy and it should be good. And if it's not, give it a light sand and then go over it with one final coat. All right, so here we are for the design. So I downloaded this vintage paper and this floral frame, if you will. Yeah, frame from Creative Fabrica, and I'll link them down below. And I went in and I did an offset on the frame. So when you first click the offset, it goes automatically, it defaults to 0.25, and it takes a really long time for it to get to that point. And then I went and I set it to 0.15, and it took even longer. So once I finally got that offset, I went and I put it over to the vintage paper. I sliced it out. And then you do have that circle in the center. Oh, I made, I'm sorry, I made sure I duplicated that vintage paper. So I delete that extra stuff and then I go in and I made the mistake of welding it, which you should not. Uh, and you'll see that I sized it up to fill in that center and then I went and welded it and it turned it gray. So yeah, unweld that because that is not right. Just attach it together and then this way it'll print out as one. And now, I'm going to pull up an oval. I'm gonna turn it sideways and then resize it within that frame because that frame has a lot going on in the center and I wanna be able to put words in there. So I did this and basically sliced out the center and that is it. It is pretty easy peasy. So once I got that sliced out and you're gonna see Cricut Design Space is like doing this really wonky thing. Like I deleted that and then it like showed back up and it was like, I'm like, what is this thing doing? So, you know, that's Cricut Design Space being, you know, crazy. But anyway, so you put these together, go ahead and align them and uh, attach them and then you can put whatever wording you want inside. Oh, and I printed this up on printable vinyl, and I will link that down below as well. I just order it from Amazon. I'm not affiliated with anybody. 
All right, guys, so I had to, I am recording this again because I was clearing out my phone and I deleted my final remarks for this video. I can't believe I did that. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just trying to clear it out to make room. Anyway, so this tumbler, this wine bottle tumbler, I, I don't even, I can't call it a tumbler. Just this wine, this stainless steel wine bottle is done. And it is in the hands of its new owner, so I don't have it here with me, but after this, I will definitely uh, post the video of what it looks, you know, as I always do. So this wine bottle tumbler is definitely, it was not my favorite to work on. I struggled with this mainly because of mounting problems. I you know, thought that I had it tight and it just wasn't tight enough. So you really, it's really got to be snug on that turner because it is so long and just awkward when you put it on your turner. So you have to be careful because I did have some leaning at one point and the epoxy did pull up a little bit down the bottom and then I had to shave that down. And then I had the bug, <laughs> the bug in there, which wasn't my fault. Well, sort of my fault, but so uh, overall, I love the way it came out, but definitely not my favorite to work on. Not something that I would be outwardly marketing to sell a lot of. There was, you know, quite a bit of work that went into keeping this thing from just being a hot mess. So, but, you know, it, 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 was it worth it in the end? Uh, I don't know. Mm, you know, sometimes they're just not worth it in the end, but it was fun-ish to do. I do like doing new projects and I do like challenging myself. So that is it for this tutorial, guys. Sorry that I don't have it here to show you, but you'll see again the pictures. This is kind of redundant. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up subscribe, share, comment. I love to hear your feedback. And also check out my Facebook group. It's a craft thing for things that I do that I don't do tutorials on as well as my Instagram. And don't forget to check out or join GMI's uh, Superstars group. Glitter makes it Superstars group to see all of the other creations that people are coming up with as well as their fun giveaways on Sunday. So that is it. I will see you all next time. Bye.